Hi, I thought this um, week I'd talk to you about um, the journey that a painting goes in. And um, this sort of, um, I was thinking about this the other day because I've just started um, a whole bunch of new paintings. And these are all um, these ones here. And they all start in the same way. I go through the same process, use the same tools, um, you know, and just I start them off all the same way. I use different colours, but the process, what I actually do, is the same for each painting. But at some point along the way, in fact fairly soon in the process of these paintings, I look at them and I decide what each individual painting actually needs. And so at that point they start to sort of deviate and go off in different directions. I've recently finished another painting and um, this painting had a quite a different journey that, that most of my paintings have so I thought I would talk about that one. So I'll swing you over here to have a look at this one. So this is the painting that I have recently finished and um, that had a bit of a strange journey. So when I finished it the first time, it was late last year I think, and I was quite happy with it at the time. I thought that I had done quite a good job. Um, I really liked the colours that I'd used. They were more subtle than I had done before. And um, I really liked the yellow in it. Um, and I was mixing yellow with sort of torpy colours, sort of neutrals, and I really liked that. Um, and it was this sort of area here that um, had me most excited. And as time went by, um, I had the painting stretched, I had it framed, but as time went by, I just became increasingly doubtful about it, and it was nagging at me, and I was thinking, oh no, this is, you know, I've got it framed, I've varnished it, you know, it's ready to go, and I'm just not liking it anymore. So in the end, I took it off the um, stretcher, I took it out of the frame, took it off the stretcher, and I took the, the varnish off it. I had it sitting in the studio waiting for me to get to it because it was a bit of a, I'd sort of lost, well, I didn't, hadn't lost interest in it, but I knew that it was going to be a problem that needed to be solved, and I had other paintings that I was more interested in. So it's kind of sat waiting for me for quite a long time. And um, in that time, I had a friend who is an artist whose work I really like and I res respect her opinion. She visited and she s thought that it looked really good and she didn't think that I needed to. Um, she thought it was fine. It thought I was being silly, wanting to go back into it. I really didn't like it and so I knew I had to go back into it. So back into it I went and um, what I did was I turned it upside down first of all so that um, I was looking at it fresh. What I didn't like about it was that um, the contrasts were almost like too strong. I had this really big dark shape um, in it and I had these subtle, this sort of subtle area that I really liked. And I just felt like, and these were made of little um, chips of um, colour and little shapes and then I had this big strong area that sort of was like a big L shape on the painting and I just felt like they were opposite but they didn't have enough in common. I think, um, I think in paintings we want to have opposites um, because that you know gives us something, something exciting and, ex and surprising and they look so good next to each other but they almost, they, they need to have some commonality, otherwise it's a bit like um, they're just, they're too disparate and you can't, they don't sit harmoniously together, even though they're different, they don't sit harmoniously together unless they have something that hangs them together, unless they've got something that's in common. <clears throat> and I think in this original painting that I had, I think the problem was that they were too strong and that was drowning out. Those big shapes were drowning out the subtlety that I had in here. So I turned the painting on its head and so now the big shape was on the bottom. And I painted, I got rid of the darkness of it because it was too strong. And I got, and I used a torp, you know, sort of a neutral, um, 
desaturated, light, muddy colour, torpy sort of colour, um, and got rid of that. And I think it was dark through here as well, so I got rid of the, that other bit of dark as well. So then, once I had done that, this area here, and it has got this, you know, it has got bits in it that are just as dark as that original big piece that was dark. So I still have that strength and value contrast coming through in the painting. But um, somehow, because they're smaller, they still have a little bit of punch, but they don't drown out the whole painting. And then I was able to bring in the other colours and keep that subtlety going in the rest of the painting and not have it being so dominated by those big, loud, dark areas. Um, and then I just brought through what else I had going in it and um, continued to, to build the painting. Now I like it a whole lot better. And um, the other thing that I did was it already had little bits of blue in it and I took that little bit of blue and dotted it around and then I thought I'm going to make something stronger out of the blue and I sort of, this is a, a point in, the, in um, making a painting that people get to and I, sometimes I think they just don't take things far enough and I sort of liken it to um, a choir. When you have a choir um, you have you know, you have different parts. You have sopranos, altos, tenors, bass, you know, whatever you have. I'm not an expert on this. I've, I have actually never even been in a choir. But um, my mother used to be in a choir, and we used to go and watch her and, and see them sing. But um, anyway, my, this is my impression of it, that they, all these different parts come together and make a beautiful harmony. But they all have their own parts to play, like within a song there'll be one that carries the melody through and there'll be others that back it up with, um, with you know, a, a variation of that melody or something that makes that melody stand out really beautifully and, and um, just provides a really lovely backdrop to that beautiful sound. And they all work so beautifully together but they all have their place. So when I decided to bring out this blue, it was a bit like giving in a choir a slightly stronger part to the sopranos. So in this painting, um, this blue, I gave a little bit more strength to. And the yellow is already another part of this choir, or this painting, that has a bit of strength as well. And then the other colours and the shapes and everything else that goes into it are the backdrop. They are, they are the things that support it and make those that yellow and that blue um, look or look so good together or as part of the painting. That's kind of how I see it. So having chosen which parts are going to be your um, soloists or your sort of star players, um, then you've got to have a fine balancing act between having them being, um, being strong but you don't want them to drown out all the beautiful harmonies and things that are going on in the background. Well, you don't want the background singing louder than the, than the soloist because then you don't hear the soloist. Equally, the background has to sing in time and, and provide all those lovely parts and, and harmonies to what the, that soloist is singing. So um, it's a fine balance to, to strike. And I didn't have it in the first version of this painting. I had one drowning out the other. But I feel like I do have it in this painting. I feel like I've, I've, um, I have um, some strength to it, but I also have the harmony and the subtlety as well of all those parts working together. And this painting um, was one of the paintings that I submitted to um, the New Art Gallery as part of my, um, I was invita invited to um, submit some work for them because I had won the Art to Life um, jury show. And this was one of the ones that um, Juan actually chose. So I feel that, um, you know, I've made the right decisions in, in going back into this painting and um, making those changes. 
and um, so that's very validate, validating and it's, um, I'm pleased I, I went back in. So there's two things to go away from here. When you've got that nagging feeling, you must go back in, even though you have friends you say don't. <laughs> and um, the other thing is when you are composing your painting or bringing the thing together, you've got to strike that balance between pulling out the parts of your painting that are going to be a little bit stronger, but still letting the harmonies and the subtleties and all the richness that you've got as a backdrop to, to those star players, still letting them have a place in the painting so that they all work together beautifully, you know, harmoniously together. Okay, well I hope that's helped, and um, have a happy painting week. <laughs>